warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I just recited portion of Surah Mujadila, chapter 58, verse 11, which says, Allah will elevate those who are faithful and given knowledge in high ranks, and Allah is all aware of what you do. This talk is organized by Smart Talk, which was started by a group of like-minded people. In fact, like planet friends residing at Muscat, Oman, to share good practices in various topics practiced across the globe. Our speaker today is none other than Brother Dawood Wade, who is a mindset coach, an educationist, and a professional quizzer, an electronic engineer, MA in education and an MBA. He left his lavish career as a patent attorney in Switzerland, Moscow and Dubai to work on SDG, Global Goals and Skills Workshop. He authored two books, namely The, the Education Riddle and The Talk. The talk is basically a compilation of 25 popular Muslim speakers. He heads an online e-school, hub schooling, and an unschool, the Golden Sparrow in Mumbai, India. He loves horses and promises to reply within 48 hours. To connect with him, you can email him at Dawood at skyeducation.in. I repeat, Dawood at skyeducation.in. Without spending much time, I would like to call upon Brother Dawood. Brother Dawood, please. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everybody. And uh, once again, thank you so much for being here. I understand that Oman has uh, you know, opened the lockdown. And despite that, all of you are here, which is, which is a sign very promising that education is at the core of everybody. Uh, once again, uh, all the organizing team, uh, Shamkir Bhai and rest of the people, brothers Khalid, Shah Jahan, and all of them who I met, I think Oman has a wonderful, distinct culture. I visited Oman a few times for the quizzes and in the, in the Sultan Qubuz Auditorium. And I've always found the most generous and the most hospitable of all Arab people, Alhamdulillah, are the Omanis. So, and all of you, the rest of the world, I think I should not offend anybody other than in, in other Gulf states or in India, but you know, uh, they say, yeah, biased because speaking, but no, I have maintained this thing. Even if I am speaking on a Riyadh or, or a Qatar forum, I would always say that Oman is one of my favorite places, Muscat, a favorite city of mine. So uh, thank you once again for being here and Jazakallah khair. So we praise Allah, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Wassalatu Wassalam, Rasul Al-Kareem, Wa Ala Ali Wa Sallam we thank him for the opportunity, for the education that is given us, and how can we take it forward. In the next 45 minutes to an hour that we'll have a conversation with, I would love to tell you a few things where education has taken countries, individuals, people to a different level. Hopefully that will help us connect with what we are talking about, the theme of today. And as I share my screen and share that with you, it's called the promise of pencil a very ordinary instrument, a very, very simple piece, something that all of us have grown with. And if I look around with my daughters, there will be a pencil somewhere lying down. And all of us have known like HBs and Stedlers, and we've seen uh, you know, uh, Natraj pencils when I grew up in, in back in, in Kolkata. We've seen the simple pencil can change the thinking of a person. What is the promise of this? How can we connect it with the theme the ummah that we are part of. How can you connect with the education system? And I work a lot in the SDG sector. SDG is a United Nations 17 goals. And there is a goal number four called quality education. I, I really believe this promise of pencil can do wonderful work in the SDG. So on that note, Alhamdulillah, uh, uh, for the generous introduction. Yes, one of the things that I've seen in my work across the world they have a little uh, time I could spend uh, in Moscow, in Switzerland. And what I've done is I've just picked up stories from these countries. 
whichever country I've come across, I've done a lot of work in, 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 in the American University, in Lebanon, in Beirut, uh, in, in Vice Qatar, some, some really prestigious work. I did some work with Singapore, the Madrasa system in Singapore, I was invited to audit the entire, and, and believe me, I was absolutely impressed the way they were teaching. So a lot of things today in Promise of Pencil is nothing but stories, not from all the countries, but from some of the countries I could go to, travel to, work with, and inshallah, I'll share these stories with you. That's the whole idea of the promise of a pencil. Also, being a professional quizzer and a storyteller for children, I believe people forget statistics, they remember stories. So let's tell each other stories. Let's believe the stories are what will make a difference. And, and inshallah, it will make a difference in the ummah that we are creating. Well, that is my, that my youngest daughter, my third of my three daughters, Zainab. And yes, I'm an Avenger fan for all those who are looking at that, uh, that no, no, I work with children. So as much as I like talking to all of you, trust me, I can talk much about the, the you know, uh, the Black Panthers and the Thanos and which moon, which moon does Thanos live in. And I do a lot of science classes based on the Avengers. What is vibranium? We'll not go to that country, Wakanda, if anybody's here. But if you do not know, if you do not know where Wakanda is, ask your teenage son or your tween, anybody, your children, they will tell you an entire history of Black Panther. Why I tell it very proudly is if you want to work in education, brothers and sisters, you need to know the language of the teenagers or the youth or, or even the children. If you understand this, inshallah, you will be in a very, very different program, a different world. So on that note, alhamdulillah, uh, you are free to use your chats, to ask questions, to comment. I love to actually read the comments while the sessions are going on. Alhamdulillah, uh, I, I just put, uh, put you know, a Facebook profile. I just added that we are calling a new term for us in this, in this 2020 called Zoom Bees. I'm sure you know what Zoom is. We are all doing a Zoom session. And zombie, you know, the walking dead kind of people. So we are the zombies. Our life revolves around Zoom. My wife calls me the Zoom man. So subhanallah, uh, you know, please use your chat. I've got so used to it. I can do multitasking at least. I can read your chats and I can, I'll ask you quizzes and questions as we go ahead. So there you are. I hope you can hear me well and loud. Uh, let me know if anyone wants to uh, repeat something or clarify. Can I get a couple of yeses on the chat? So I know you are with me. Tayyip. And I know that brothers have not switched on their yeah, Jazakallah brother Kafeen. So I'm, I'm seeing a lot of you Jazakallah I've seen. Alhamdulillah. So I know people in Oman are not going out in the past. They're still sitting in the webinar and listening to all of us. Barakallah Sheikh. I can see a lot of yeses now. So I know all of you Alhamdulillah in. Let me take the first story. And I said Inshallah it'll be a collection of four or five stories with you that I want to talk about. The first story in the promise of a pencil is a story of something amazing. It's a story about a country I've done most of my work with in Russia. You know, I, I know I've been to Russia and one of the least friendly countries, trust me. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, sometimes your nationalism, your patriotism comes in. I'm not, no offense to anybody else. But when I used to go to Russia and they'll say, you're from Pakistan and I'll say, no, India. At least my immigration would be easier. So Alhamdulillah, I said, you know, I'm proud Indian and, and I have a lot of friends across the border. But the point is, it's the least friendly country. Perhaps it's in the nature they are supposed to be, you know, strong. Look at the president there. This is supposed to be like that. But one thing I learned in Moscow was something interesting. What did I learn was there was a Britisher who had come post Cold War to explain certain things to the Russians. And he said, because I could not speak Russian, I was speaking in English. There was a translator who was translating everything in Russian. And there was a PowerPoint slideshow going on, which will explain everything. And I spoke for 25 minutes. So imagine I'm speaking to you right now. And as he's speaking for 25 minutes, I look at the PowerPoint slide. I look at what I'm speaking and I realize there's no mismatch. So for the last 20 minutes, what he was speaking was nothing relevant to what was on the PowerPoint slide. And all the students, because they could hear him, they heard him. And, and when they heard him, they, they, they did not stop him. You know, they knew the instructor was, was wrong. They knew the instructor was doing something, you know, it's like they were, they, were, they were aware that he's not speaking the right uh, presentation. And he said, why did you not stop me? 20 minutes I'm speaking and you did not even stop me. And the student said, in Russia, we never interrupt the teacher. SubhanAllah. In Russia, we do not. A teacher is the highest level. We do not, do not for any reason stop the teacher. I mean, look at a country which has no religion. It is a communist country, but the respect they have for the Ustad. You know, one of the words used for Ustad is the Murabbi. 
murabbi is, is is you know a loosely translated word we also use in urdu if you know it comes to the same root was a rub wa bil walidain ihsana allah uses the word rub that rabbi grab huma ana you know allah is saying that when you get old have mercy on your parents the only time allah has used the word rub is for himself and a parents and then there is a word for a teacher a murabbi think about it the respect you give to your teachers and i know today classes are not easy you know trust me these zoom classes are like you are invited to my home you know you can see if my daughter runs behind or if somebody comes in if my come wife comes in and she's not wearing hijab i'll be embarrassed or my father walks through but this is where your akhlaq comes in our teachers today who are some of them have never used technology in their life are coming online in your houses what is the respect we give them you know simple things like muting and putting the videos on one of the thing i say i'm not asking you to do but i'm asking our students to do that this is the lesson i learned the education lesson i learned my first lesson and i worked under a professor called professor muradin kumakau in moscow and i learned this the next thing i learned in russia which is interesting anybody knows what this place is called in moscow please go ahead and tell me it's a very very famous place i'm sure you all uh, heard about it So, like Egypt has a Tahrir Square. What's this place? Or, or you have Lal Bag in Delhi, Azad Maidan in Mumbai. Yes, a lot of my, my friends are from India, Maharashtra, and across. What is this place called? It's a very famous landmark in Russia, in Moscow rather. It's a name of a color and a, a, a shape. And that's the hint I can give you. So, as I said, I'll ask a lot of questions. It's some square. What square am I talking about? Anyone? I hope you can see my screen. Now your chats will tell me where I'm talking about. Oh, Jazakallah Khair. Yes, it is the Red Square, right? So I know somebody who knows Russia at least. Okay. Now the idea is when I visited Russia, and when I went across, one thing I noticed in Russia was everywhere, everywhere I saw buildings like these old buildings made of brick, you know, red brick specially. But each corner of a street had a research institute. You know, I, that time my office was in Dubai, so I used to fly down. And because Russia is right, Moscow is right about Dubai, it's the same five hours you fly down. The time zone is same, right? And I saw research institute in every nook and corner of Moscow. And my work was in Moscow Aviation Institute. There was other institute. There was Technology Institute. They so and so. And when I fly back to Dubai, every nook and corner, what do I see? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. I see, I see the malls that I see. You know the biggest thing in Dubai is the DSF, Dubai Shopping Festival. Imagine a, a country that does not believe in in God, a country that does not believe in any kind of organized religion. The idea of research is so much, and we as an ummah are not blaming anything else. As an ummah, where Allah has revealed, "Iqra bismi Rabbi kalladi khalaq Allah." You know, and the ayahs come in, and the ayahs five five ayahs. Allah al insan al ma alam yalam. When I read the five ayahs, my this goosebump on me. And we have forgotten research. We have forgotten education, and that is. I'm not saying, sister, especially that that shopping is haram. DSF is good. Go ahead, enjoy it. Please do it. There are some good deals now. You'll have Amazon shopping coming up in in the New Year holidays. But my perspective changed when I went to Russia, and that is the day I learned what education can do. And that is the first lesson we are talking about. Every pencil needs a sharpener. Our children are like those pencil, raw, uncut. You have to give them the right tools. A sharpener is a tool. You cannot work without tool. If you do not improve your tool, you know Stephen Covey says sharpening the saw, right? If your education institute, if your online classes are not better, not smarter, your teachers are not trained, there is nothing that your child can. Do. And this is one lesson that we talk about. No, you have to put an effort to make your education better, and that is exactly what we expect from Iman, isn't it? Iman is a verb. So is talim. The ability to gain knowledge is a verb. You can't say, "Oh, I'm a Muslim," but you're not walking to the masjid. You're not doing an action. You're not doing wudu. That is not acceptable. So this is the lesson that I learned from. Action is required. Otherwise, we have compiled knowledge, but if you don't implement it, it's of no use. You know, there's a lovely story of Imam Al Ghazali. Supposed to be one of a great scholar. You know, he said something so interesting. Imam Ghazali. He said that one of the best lessons I had was from a highway robber. Some thief, a thief giving a, a lesson to Imam Ghazali. How is that possible? Imam Ghazali said, "I was one day traveling 
with loads of everything. He was moving from one city to another. And it was very dark night. And a, and a, and a group of highway robbers come and attack him. And then as they take everything away, Imam Ghazali said, don't take this one caravan. You can take all the other caravan. Don't take one caravan away. And he says, why not? And he says, this is a caravan full of my books. I want my books with me. And the highway robber, the thief, the petty thief tells him, the, the imam, he tells him, what good is your knowledge when you need your books to refer to? You know, it's like telling a half is, you have the mushaf with you, what's the point? You know, and he said, Imam Ghazali said, this is the best lesson I learned, that it's not the books, it's the application of book I need to go. And he said, I gifted my books away. Trust me, I'm, I don't have such a such an envious collection as Imam Ghazali. But one thing I did in my life, you know, in Bombay, I, I think, mashallah, now some of the brothers who live here, our houses are not huge, alhamdulillah. Our hearts are, inshallah, I hope so, right? Uh, but our houses, I, so the best thing I could do is gift my books away. And trust me, I feel liberated. I still have my bookshelf with me, but somebody comes to my home, I am no more holding my books away. This is a lesson you learn in. And that is the first promise of a pencil. The more ilm you give, the better you become. The more knowledge. You know, it's, you know, if I give you a rupee or, or one dinar and you give me one dinar, we both are left with one one dinar. But if I give you one idea and you give me one idea, we both have two ideas. That's what education does. That's what Talib does. You know, the more you share, the better you become. And I learned this from a group of Russians who perhaps are the most difficult people to live with. I know only Niyat and Da. You know, so yes and no, that's in Russian. Those of you know it. Subhanallah, that's a lesson number one, the promise of a pencil. That's, that's a beautiful thing I learned from there. Okay, where do I go next from, from Russia? So let me go to a few new hero. As I said, people, countries can teach us something. This is a story of a man whose name is Adam Brown. Adam Brown, you know, uh, a young somopho, young engineer that he was, he said they had something amazing in, in college, which was called that semester at sea. So one entire six months, the schools, the college students will go around the world in a ship, a cruise ship perhaps, but they will at least go and visit 20 to 30 countries. He said, I visited India, and, or was it Bangladesh? So one of the two countries, but Bangladesh, Dhaka is a port. And he said, as I was talking on the, on the streets of Dhaka, I, I met a street urchin, a street urchin, a beggar, a small boy. And I asked him, what do you want? This is an American who comes in and he has a lot of money with him. He has a free gift, he, you know, a, a backpack, whatever. And the boy told him, can I get a pencil? And Adam said, it changed my perspective. The title of the workshop is from the book that Adam has written. Uh, uh, you know, it says that how one request of a pencil changed my, my thinking. This little child in the, in the streets of Dhaka wanted a pencil? of everything else. He said, something we don't even care about. You throw them all around. Our children want pencil boxes and we, do, we have 10 and we get one more. And he said, how can a pencil change? And Adam left a very lavish career and he started traveling across, especially in Africa, where his only purpose was setting up schools. Setting up schools. And I will come to why this is so relevant as an ummah we are talking about. SubhanAllah, he's done so much of work in Chad, in Nigeria, in Sudan, and then he went to the closer continent of America, the South America. He went to Argentina. He was working in Buenos Aires. He went to Brazil. He went to Uruguay. He went to Peru, Colombia. And he said, the most fulfilling work I had, he started an organization called Room to Read. What he did, basically, the, the idea of, he said, all I have to do is set up a library. The focus on reading. Again, Ikhara comes in. Ikhara, bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. You know, the, the very idea, you know, the idea of kalam, the idea of pen that Allah is speaking about is the idea, the ummah, the, you know, in Canada, they say there is zero percent illiteracy. So everyone's literate. I can only say that of Kerala, mashallah, and I saw some of the brothers from uh, Kanur and other places, alhamdulillah. But the idea is when Canada says zero percent Illiteracy, they mean digital literacy also, not just reading and writing. It is about it is about knowing how to use a computer. Imagine as an ummah, the ummah which is supposed to read, we are the most illiterate ummah in the world. The amount of books being lended in our libraries 
is, is comparatively poorer than China, Australia, Brazil, Colombia, and across. I am not even talking about Europe across. Why? Because we have not introduced reading as a culture. Room to read. The first library in the world to me was Ghare Hira. Rasulullah was such a, you know, he was always away from the society until the Ikhra came. It changed his life. How and what are we doing today? Brothers and sisters, all I'm asking you now is tell me the name of one book your child is reading. I'll be proud if there are books around your house. You know, it is said that whatever is around your house, a small tip as a mindset coach I can give you is picked up. So, you know, you have a lot of chocolates, there will be a lot of obesity in your house. You have a lot of Coke and Pepsi in your refrigerator, children will drink it. You know, if your mobile phones are near you, it's called zone of proximity, you will pick up the mobile phone. If books are lying in your house, open up the library, go to Amazon, there's, there's a series called DK Books, beautifully cheap printed 500, 600 Indian rupees books, buy four or five of them and take it across. That's an advice, an honest advice I can give you. This is what is required. This is what Room to Read does. Another great, great, you know, these are modern day heroes I can talk about, John Wood. John Wood wrote another book, and I keep talking about references on the book. He wrote a book called Leaving Microsoft to Change the World. That's the founder I'm talking about, Room to Read. So these two people, young entrepreneurs, you know, they had lavish careers, you know, each of them. They could reach out to the best people, but they left their corporate life just to start something with the children in education. What are you and I doing? Can we start at home with our children? You know, one of the focus of the workshop is a practical area. What are your children reading? If you tell me that, I'll be so proud. You know, subhanAllah, one of the best things that pandemic has done to me and my daughters is we have a routine of reading. Every night before going to bed, you know, we, I have got three daughters, alhamdulillah, and I have got three books for them. Each time we read, read one page from the book together, and then there is a personal reading time we spend on it. Just the idea is you as father and mother, if you start reading aloud to them, just reading a story to them, it changes their thinking and perspective. You know, I, I, Winston Churchill says that headmasters, and I can ask anyone who is at the head of the family, also has the power at the disposal with which prime ministers have never been invested. You, as the head of the family, with few investment in books, can change the perspective of your house. So the first word was pencil as an action tool. Now, pencil is a voice. And I mean specifically about reading, the words that you write. And this, it, these are two lessons I just took up. And inshallah, as we build up, I want you to become those entrepreneurs in the ummah who can bring a change in the field of education. Okay, so, you know, I've done a lot of talking and I thought I'll take a little pause. When I use the word pencil or school, what does it remind you of? What objects come to your mind? I know pencil is one of them. I want to hear some more objects. What, what do you think? When, I, when the word school comes in, what kind of objects come to your mind? Go ahead and tell me. Blackboards and chairs and teachers and dusters or, or those sticks that you got hit with. Go ahead, please write down. I'd love to see your record uh, answers on the screen. So use your chat, please. I think we can enable the chat again. Give me at least five, ten. Okay. Uh, are the chats enabled, brother? Yes, it is enabled. Okay. I think maybe I'm missing out the chat. Yeah. Or Alhamdulillah, I can see that. Jazakallah. So Jazakallah, I can see different boxes. Yes, I love that answer. The sphere of teacher, oh, that's wonderful. Graphite, okay, that's the pencil head. Alhamdulillah, uniform, that's beautiful. I think I, I missed out when I, classroom. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I can see some board knowledge. Yes, absolutely. Color pencils, you know, there's a research done and this is a beautiful research that I can hear. Friends, oh, absolutely. Some of the worst friends you made in school and you still have them because you can't get rid of bad habits, isn't it? Yes, subhanAllah. But the most beautiful thing is all of us are nostalgic. Mischief, yes. I don't know how much you are, Brother Ahmed, but, uh, but I'm sure we all had some great fun. And school was a time, chalk and drawings and library and dusters, uh, PT classes that we loved to bunk all the time, or the only classes we enjoyed, I, you know, uh, tiffin boxes, poking others. Brother Shamshir said that, were you being bullied or you bullied others, Shamshir? But tell me later at the end of the session. Music classes, art and craft, benches, wonderful. 
the memories that we are evoking. Oh, assembly, who can forget that morning dreadful assembly? And especially if you are the school leader, that you have to let the pledge of oath, all Indians are my brothers and sisters, we young people hated that line, sign. You know, it, it is so amazing when you think about all of it. Education does that. We all are so nostalgic. The memories of a school is still there. What memories can we give to them? You know, today is a new normal, isn't it? We have changed the world. Are we creating enough memories again? That's the key that we're talking about. Thank you so much. I love the way you all are interacting and I'm happy to see that. And I can see some more points coming in. Yes, Firoz Bhai, I can see a, a lot of pointers there. Sister Fatima was sharing and caring. Class monitors, yeah. And we hated if somebody else was a monitor who, who gave a name to the teachers or wrote them on the blackboard. But see, your memories are coming through. Are we creating enough memories for our children? You know, this year was tough. And my prediction, and as we look at the education board, this entire academic year, until Ramadan, you're going to do online. Are we creating new opportunities online for children? Let's take, let's take another pandemic of a different kind some years back. So I'm taking you from different countries. We went to Russia. Then we went to United States where we had these entrepreneurs. And now we're coming to a, a small European country, Poland. What's special about Poland? Because Poland was always been the country. You see, the neighbor is Germany, not a very good neighbor to have, at least when Hitler and Nazis were all there. And then there was this Russian cold iron mountains out there. <clears throat> Poland was always a difficult country to live in. SubhanAllah, one thing that Poland did amazing is they always valued the education. They always believed no matter what happened, you cannot compromise on education. So when they were, you know, even before when the Aryan supremacy and the, and the Nazi story were going on, Poland started what is called the underground university. What do you mean by underground university? Is these the shifting universities? They did not have proper universities out there. And they started a program that they will teach children after dark in small shallows, in garages, in gardens, and wherever they can, but they'll not compromise on, on education. Today, in fact, if you look at the countries, perhaps one of the best country in terms of per capita people winning Nobel prizes is Poland. It is, it is in, in language, it is in science, it is in, in all the fields, where the, the physics and the chemistry that you know, and Poland is leading in winning Nobel prizes. So what is Poland done separately? Poland, Poland, with Warsaw as the capital, did this universities at some point they were called yeah. the floating, floating university. Why floating? Because you know they were never at the same place. They were always being shifted. And especially, especially when women were not allowed to learn. You know, you know, subhanAllah, there was always this whole thing that women are not allowed to study. The best place for the girls to study was in the floating universities in Poland. Can you tell me anybody who actually, you know, came out from Poland, a very, very famous woman scientist? Come on, go ahead. Let me quiz you on your, on your, on your GK now. A name of a lady who has not won one, but two Nobel Prizes. She is from Poland. Who am I talking about? Let me see. Go ahead. Come on. You can Google it if you want to. I'm okay with online learning like that. Masha Allah, I mean, says that, Alhamdulillah. Yes, absolutely. It's Mary Curie. You see, the, you know, Pope, by the way, was a part, you know, John Pope, uh, current Pope, uh, the one before him, he was a part of the underground floating universities of Poland. And what am I talking about is this. I'll come to Mary Curie in a while, but something very similar happened in Dar al Arkham in Makkah. You know, when the opportunities to learn, to go, to seek knowledge, to, to grow in your iman is not there, you create those opportunities. In the small house, perhaps smaller than a room that you are sitting in and watching this webinar, you know, in your air-conditioned houses, this was a place where the Sahabas, the beginning batch of the Sahabas, would sit in a candlelit when a wahi would come in and they say, this is the first ilm, this is the first knowledge came. When I'm coming from Poland to Makkah, because the synergies are there, the ummah that invested in education has always been a successful ummah. In our case, we gave a case study of Poland, that Poland today has a per capita Nobel Prize, the highest in the world, because they invested, they did not compromise in the education. This is the lady we're talking about, Mary Curie or Madame Curie. She has won two Nobel Prizes. Of course, she was exposed to the harmful excess, but she taught the world that your woman education cannot be compromised. SubhanAllah, think of it. This is another SDG goal, goal number five, gender equality. She is the one who invented this radium, and that is the exposure she had. There is an element in the periodic table named after her called the polonium and the curium, two, two elements in, in 
in, in the entire Mendel Eves periodic table named after her, what are we learning from them? You know, sometimes we think, what about our girls? Trust me, your girls are the leaders of the Ummah. If you do not train and teach your girls, perhaps we are doing injustice to the words that Allah gave. From Surah Nisa to, to the Hadith of If, to the great leaders that we have. SubhanAllah, Jazakallah, 18 Nobel Prizes, Brother Abdul Majid, brilliant. I love the statistics. Okay, so here is another quiz for you. Tell me the name of the most famous nurse in the world. Go ahead. You know, especially in the Corona and the COVID, you know, a lot of doctors and this. So I want the quick answer. The most famous, you have learned in your school. Yes, Jazakallah, you have learned in your school. Can I have quick answers? I've got the right answer, absolutely, isn't it? Brilliant, brilliant. I love the way you're interacting, even if it's wrong, right? Don't worry, sometimes it's okay to be wrong. So in a school, that's what we've learned, right? The lady with the lamp, Florence Nightingale, or Mother Teresa, yeah? the, the saint of the poor. That's what we've learned. And subhanAllah, she's right. They, they have done some great work. And I respect as much as I respect the French lady or the Croatian Indian lady, Mother Teresa. And I have great respect for them. I was born in Kolkata, by the way. But sometimes we forget our own narratives. We forget our own stories. We forget our own history. You know, there is a lady by the name of Rufeda al-Ansari. Maybe we do not know. Rufeda al-Ansari is a Sahabia. She was the first nurse recognized, not by anyone else, but the University of Ireland. There is a national annual award given every year in the name of the best nurse, Rufeda Award. Imagine. She was the nurse that Rasulullah gave responsibility to go and tend to the injured in Badr. We have forgotten, isn't it? And there is no shame in not knowing, but no shame in not accepting that we don't know. Rufayd al Ansari, go Google it, check her. Tell your children, tell your daughters, we want more pediatrics, we want more dermatologists, we want more gynecologists, we want people from our field, not just doctors, but across subhanAllah. From fashion designers to architects, from lawyers to engineers, it's all about teaching them. And this is the lesson I learned from Poland. Two lessons. Lesson number one that I learned is the best lesson is you, you create opportunities to learn, floating university. And number two, we have forgotten our history. We've forgotten Rufeda, and that's an injustice we're doing to the Ummah today. So we hopefully doing good. And Jazakallah, I can see your interactions. I can see all of you participating well. Let me take you to the fourth story. Perhaps the last story in the sequence, and then we'll open up some discussion of what we can immediately do. Where does the fourth story take me? Oh, it takes me to a beautiful country. So we have taken a world tour, isn't it? SubhanAllah, we have gone from Europe now to the Asian. One of my favorite countries which I have not visited is Afghanistan. I've heard so much about Afghanistan. I want you to again use your chat and write down first word that comes to mind, one or two words. Uh, which which Afghanistan uh, can go. Okay, uh, I think I think if Poland good for Muslim, Finland is a is a good country. Uh, I know few few families in Finland though, but I do not know much about Poland. It's a very close country though, uh, the Polish people that way. But Germany, which is his neighbor, is an amazing country right now for the opportunities German Germans have. So yes, all right. Uh, I can see uh, Brother Sheikh says uh, Ahmed says Pashtun. Okay, that's the word comes in. Yes, to the Kafil, you're honest. It's ISIS or terrorism that the word can come in. This is Fatima says Kabul, the capital. What else? Go ahead, tell me. Pulao. Oh, I like that. I like that. Oh, Rashid Khan. Oh, yes. Sadiq Bhai, I am equally a big fan of cricket. I read a lot about it. So there you have Rashid Khan and Muhammad Nabi and, and there's someone else, right? Mujibur Rahman. Yes, the Taliban. How can you not name them? Uh, from the Abdullah. Pulao, I think. I still chai in Afghanistan. But a country which has a beautiful legacy, a country which is so amazing. There is actually a movie, if I can recollect it. Okay, it's called The Breadwinner. I don't know. She This is this is directed by Angelina Jolie. So don't watch it yourself because it's Jolie. But it's a, it's a it's an animated movie. It's a beautiful movie about a life in, in Afghanistan. Oh, yes, I can see some of you. Khorasan Hadith. All right, Barakallah Fiq, Ahmed Shah Abdali. Yes, you can, you can see now the Afghan coming in. Now, if I were to tell you, imagine if Afghanistan as a word comes in. I mean, if you were to ask me, this is the picture that is painted in my mind. You know, people with AK 47s, people with those bazookas, people who are all responsible for the hay hayward and, and, and the opium trade. And unfortunately, it's a sad picture of Afghanistan. If, if ever you read about Afghanistan, trust me, if you've read Khalid Husseini, you know what Afghanistan I'm talking about. The, the mountains full of snow, you know, the place which is so beautiful. 
a city that has splendor, that has grandeur, that has delicacy, a city known for the akhlaq of the people. You can never go hungry in an Afghan home. Do you know that? Right? There's another book on education called Three Cups of Tea. Greg Mortison, he talks about changing the world through Afghanistan, the people of Afghanistan. And Khalid Husseini, one of my favorite authors, yes, the kite runner, the mountain echo, the splendid sun. Oh, it paints a picture of Afghanistan. Afghanistan is the Switzerland of India, along with Lebanon, perhaps, with the beauty it has, subhanAllah. The hospitality of the people, the haya and the grace of the women there. Yes, but we have never heard about Afghanistan that way, right? But how does it, this has to do with the education I'm talking about. So here is another great deal for you. This is a book I was talking about, Three Cups of Tea. It is said, it is said, if you go to an Afghan house, and I am giving a hint, they give you chai, right? This is a salty tea. Those who have gone to Srinagar, at least you'll know about it. And if you keep the cup straight, they will keep pouring it in, pouring it in. Until you have to keep the cup ulta or upside down, they realize that's the only way. You never say no to, it's a sunnah also to a dawah, to an invitation. These are some traditions Afghan loves so much. Subhanallah, Imam Abu Dawood, the Sijistani, uh, Brother Abdul Majid, uh, he is close to Afghanistan, but Sijistan, uh, that's, the, uh, uh, that's his, his laqab. But yes, Subhanallah, yeah, Brother Shamshir, absolutely Oman is the same culture. But how do I know if you don't invite me? It's been years I've come to Oman. So all the Omani brothers and sisters, I'm willing to come and take you to Salala. I, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing country. Yes, Subhanallah, Hattas, that's the only one people living in Dubai came close to Oman. But to see Oman and smell Oman is, is amazing. I can feel generosity in your culture. And I think all of you living there have become, you know, your environment shapes you. I think you have become so wonderful. Jazakallah, brother. Uh, uh, brother Shadia and, and others are writing. And Barakallah, Sikhs, I'm invited. Now, now, where, again, where is education here? This is education. You see, at some point, we have forgotten that Afghanistan can also be a leader in education. How? These are young Afghani girls. And there's a story I want to tell you about Afghanistan. Can you think of coding? Can you think of NASA? And if I say a girl's team from a country would go and attend a coding seminar in the United States, the last country in your mind would be Afghanistan. And that's exactly what has happened. You know, it is, this is where we're coming from, Rufaid Al Ansari and, and Florence Nightingale and, and Mary Curie. This is an Afghan girl coding team. This is a girl's team from Afghanistan who won in the United States. They attended first time when they invited and they, they, you know, it's a competition. It's not that they're just invited because they are the nice young girls and poor girls from Afghanistan. They are competing with girls and, and boys also, by the way, from Japan, from Taiwan, from Europe, from, from, your, from your UKs and, and France, from, from India. And this group of girls could not attend the event because they did not get the visa. Can you believe it? They did not get the visa in year one. They again attempted the competition. Year two, this is the group of girls in the United States from Afghanistan. My goodness, Afghan girls coding team looks like an oxymoron. Looks like a word that is filled with strangeness. You cannot believe it. But once you apply your mind, there's so much of talent in the ummah. There's so much of ilm in the ummah. There's so much of passion in the ummah. Subhanallah, you can land on Mars if you want. So this is where I'm, I'm letting you think. Construct a school in your home first. You know, that is what we do in a design thinking workshop. Another hero now, a Pakistani who is based in uh, uh, America, Salman Khan. By the way, not the Indian Salman Khan, not the Dabang Salman Khan. Yes, subhanAllah. Right? This Salman Khan, or Sal Khan as we call, backed by Microsoft and Bill Gates, he envisaged a world of uh, online learning. He already said, this is the five-year-old book I'm talking about. Today, at least we have come to a conclusion such a school is possible. Such a program is possible. What I'm trying to tell you is the pandemic, as much as it challenged all of us, it has also opened up opportunities for us. It has opened up lessons for us. And you and I must grab the lessons. Today, you don't need a teacher to be limited in your area to teach your child. SubhanAllah, in, in, you know, my children and the ones I teach are getting a Helen O'Grady arts and drama teacher from a different city because the pandemic has opened the opportunity. They are learning German. And I said, that's a language I'm very proud of. And all the Arthurul fans out there, you want to study the history of the Ottomans and Turks? German is a language. You know, they had alliance, the Ottoman Empire had alliance with Germany. Most of the books about Turks and Ottoman and Arthurul Ghazi are written in German. So they are learning the first few beginner stage of German. 
there are life skill classes that can you do without sitting you know subhanallah i'm addressing you in muscat and all over the world if it was a life class i had to come down get the visa i would still love to come down because the only problem i have online is i cannot still get your hospitality and the biryanis and the shish kebab that is happening but inshallah that also happen when education cannot wait education you know we are as an umma we are already slow because we are standing still you want to lie down the umma needs you to be on a rain on on a train on on a racing track we need that so where do we learn from all all the stories i told you all the people i spoke about i spoke about three main qualities the head the heart and the hand what i mean is you know the head is your analytical skills your science your maths subhanallah i have seen teachers do magnet experiment electricity experiment far better in online than in real life you know i will show you a video of a young girl who learns static electricity just by rubbing the balloon in her hair and she is a 7 year old girl static electricity that's the head do not deprive your children for the best teachers can come to you they can come in your house now literally the heart the heart is the emotional part communication skills as i said books read aloud you know do you have a reading session on the online classes demand that with your school ask me ask people you know around where my children can read stories you know once a week somebody should read to them it's so much fun reading a story is being read to is like watching a movie that's what the research says that's how fun it is and the hand who says you cannot enjoy online so subhanallah that's what the cloud is i'll show you what a hand can do so this is a dream i started some years back the pandemic actually allowed me to explore this dream further i i thought okay i am challenged now everyone saying this is steve jobs dream by the way school on cloud and actually subhanallah today we are living a school like that you know there is an entire opportunity let me come to that a little while later but there is an opportunity that's happening do you know about organization which is teach for america teach for india wendy corp shine mystery they have taken this organization i always say where are you going to start teach for the umma you have a talent come and tell me oh brother i can take a robotic class one session a week please and there are people students waiting for you to learn teach them entrepreneurship tell them i can do business studies i'm a successful businessman i will take a class or oh, i you can teach life skill science math you can tell them your story and they will learn from you this is what the umma needs it's a collective effort and that is what i'm asking you you know the opportunity you have until the online classes are on and i think this is a new normal look at coursera look at udemy look at an academy look at uh, elon musk says that today any mba in stanford is a waste of time come and learn in the institute itself apprenticeship skills over certificate that's what i'm inviting you to so what do i do i'll give you a little brief of golden sparrow hub schooling and shall i invite you become a part of any learning platform more importantly for the children the idea is let's say a young girl called isha today do not deprive your child from the best teachers in the world you do arts and life skill session you don't have to have a arts teacher in your neighborhood anymore why you know we are doing worldly art charcoal art painting on on glass and ceramic because we can do anything online your entire academic program I, i've got a compliment from one of the guests who came and worked with the golden spare student that i have seen changes in this student in the 6 month of pandemic that i have not seen in the last one and a half years and trust me you can do online assessments you can the students will lead learning this is where and i give you examples from countries where the where there is a will we have opportunities oh here we are some of the examples of the kind of guests the students have met alhamdulillah and i'm inviting you that you should do that create opportunities i can see a lovely culture out there the smart talks is brilliant have your children sit and have specific sessions the way you invited me for the session i'm grateful for why don't you invite somebody for your children on 15th august the indian independence day very patriotic i'm proud of it i think we had one of the best independence day celebrations we had quiz we had a games and we had a, a admiral a general a colonel sushil bhashin come in and he was so gracious to come in an entire suit with all the medals in and the children were awed by him <laughs> then we had a, a padma shri worker from 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 you know the the west of part of uh, <laughs> india so <laughs> just you know, i'll just meet somebody okay uh, uh, you know this is this is called the the ambulance dada as he is called 
He has won the Padma Shri. Uh, this is the highest Indian award or the third highest Indian award you can get for the president, uh, the latest president, Anna Pranab Mukherjee. But imagine speaking to someone like that. The students are interacting with him. They ask questions. They ask stupid and funny questions. Doesn't matter. He created an ambulance on his bike, and because his mother could not reach the hospital, he did that. And today he served and saved fifteen thousand lives. He was there. If you can see, if I if I annotate and show you, this is this man, Subhanallah, who who has a medal out there. And the student said, "What do you do when you when you when you you know petrol uh, moves away? What do you do?" And he had, he was smart enough to answer that he has backups and everything like that. But this is the beauty that we're talking about. Oh, I said hand. You know, we have fitness classes in the in the Independence Day week that we had. We had a Chennai-based team come and teach Rubik cubes to the kids. And the kids, because the Independence Day was going on, they made a cube with the Indian flag. Oh, we did German flag. Uh, perhaps we can we can of course do the Omani flag. But the idea is the children are learning, and the children are so particular. They said, "I want a blue in dot in the middle of the Ashoka Chakra." Also, these are the kind of programs that online opportunities are. If you feel sad that no, 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 we cannot learn online, trust me, the opportunities are there. The last note, the last five minutes, I want to talk to you, and then maybe open the floor for your questions, suggestions, and comments. Is everyone's worried about what happens for the tenth exam, right? Trust me, your board exams are milestones, not destination. There are many opportunities. Cambridge, I'm a, I'm a Cambridge, uh, you know, a coordinator as an I affiliate school that I, I train teachers on a Cambridge school. It you have you can attend a Cambridge opportunity as a private candidate. I have opted for open schooling for my own daughters in the entire Golden Sparrow. Ask me more about it. I I just uh, you know uh, and I do a lot of consulting for these children who are unable to go. But these are not weak students by any means. I also do for my wife is a special educator. She does for dyslexic and ADHD children. But NIOS as a board is open for best and the brightest students. The the uh, winner of IIT JE uh, last year from Tamil Nadu was an NIOS student. The program that you have is opportunities are available everywhere. You have open opportunities. I'm inviting you to explore those opportunities. You have my email, my phone number. Please WhatsApp me. I'm always available. But the the real team is the brothers who have organized this. I would invite you to take education the way it is. Subhanallah. Today we have learned. You know, I just recap what I spoke about. We have learned from across the world, from Afghanistan to Poland. We have learned from from you know from from the entrepreneurs, the young guns out there in United States to Russia. You cannot hold yourself back. Today, education is reaching out to you. Are you willing to learn? Jazakallah khair. All glory to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. All mistakes are mine. Subhanallah. Wa bihamdi. Subhanahu wa bihamdi ka. Ashhadallah la ilaha illa Allah. Astaghfiru wa taufiq wa lahi. I think I'll, I'll hand over to you, Shamsil Bhai, for conversation and discussion. I get some more time so we can talk about. Jazakallah. Jazakallah khair, Brother Dawood. Mashallah, great webinar indeed. Uh, I'm sure we have learned in one hour. More than what we have learned in our entire school days put together, isn't it? I'm sure. Anyway, it's time for the people to have their anxious, uh, you know, people they are anxious to know more about education and online things. So it's time for a Q&A session now. So my, in fact, my first question to you is, why did you meet me when I was a student? I would have definitely be a different a person by now. We didn't have this kind of, you know, people coming and meeting us. Well, so anyway, we'll I, leave the flow. I sure. admire your work, Shamshil Bhai, and I know the kind of work, Mashallah, with the, with the Canadian school that I saw. Alhamdulillah. I think today Allah has given us the opportunity to make students the way we dream of. And I can see all of us, Alhamdulillah, can create us, our children like the children we want to be. Sure, sure, inshallah. So. Uh, if anybody would like to put post their questions in the chat box, that's fine for us. If you're speaking on the mic, that's also fine for us. We have a question from Brother Abdullah bin Shafiq. Yeah, yes. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Brother Dawood. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your. Uh, mind provoking session as usual alhamdulillah already uh, we met one time in dubai i remember you alhamdulillah i my question uh, regarding is how to get engaged the 
uh, as you said the online schooling and open schooling is the uh, it, it will be the future trend but how to get uh, our children get engaged because right now also uh, my children are studying in the online schooling but they are getting they get they got bored with the schooling and they are not attentive so how to uh, this uh, challenge address this challenge here Yes. and also one one more question is how to make the reading hub because i do have so many books i read but because i do uh, but uh, my children is not fond of reading <laughs> i am not able to uh, press them to read so these two questions i okay jazakal uh, abdullah bhai also i'll add up the the question that sadak bhai has uh, which is very similar uh, how necessary is online school and uh, we are not engaging enough so here is what i had uh, learned in the last uh, one uh, almost a year when i started golden square before the pandemic and especially in the pandemic is the new normal has taught us online school is not the solution it's a hybrid model what i say hybrid model is i'll answer your questions with online regarding online education also but as i see going forward you know let's say tomorrow the school start we need not be dependent on a school and limited resources we have got for teaching our children for example you want to teach them a language it could be arabic it could be it could be you know french it could be any other language now because of course you all would be have a better access to arabic they living in the gulf but sometimes we don't what happens is i am proposing and i have been advocating it since alhamdulillah i read this book by shail khan that the hybrid model is the best model right now as i'm speaking my daughters have gone to playing football but so you cannot play football online you need a physical class but a class like say public speaking or a debating class because maybe we are not equipped for it an online teacher can do much better job a teacher who's talented who can be anywhere else so that is the future of education i see very clearly the hybrid model say you will have classes 3 days a week but another uh, two days or, or i always propose four days classes another day or two day you will have an online class where the students will learn let's say coding which uh, maybe we are not equipped to learn and anyway you need your computer you can go back home and you can do it when a father is there or, or the parents have the laptop this is the future of education this is the future trust me in a year or two every school will be adopting that the ones which don't will be wiped out or will be left behind like how we know some of the schools are not doing good the other thing that you asked very relevantly mashallah is is uh, let me answer the reading part and i'll come to the online so online is is where the key things are uh, you see i know students sometimes are stressed for online i know sometimes it is not easy being online you can create better opportunities for them number one number one i know alhamdulillah sometimes it is struggle because everywhere there is online trust me invest in great headphones you know there is a difference between earphone and a headphone when i say earphone i think you know you know what i'm talking about maybe i should pull something up okay okay here this is an earphone right i'm 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 you know i'm giving very basic idea i'm sure some of you have iphones and that's the best thing you can have but i'm talking about low cost investment like how we are in mumbai khalid bhai knows alhamdulillah hum log har cheez aasani se dhoonte sasta dhoonte right uh, these are, are are not recommended i'm sorry brother i'm you know go to amazon go to whatever uh, available thing go to ebay if you have this is slip, what slips on i'm not the moment you invest in a good headphone something which is noise cancellation the attention level of children will already increase this this makes a difference small small tips i'm giving you number 2 inshallah uh, you know i know uh, you all gift a lot of things to children save enough to give them something which is more if you sit on a mobile phone your attention will decrease you sit on a laptop you sit on a tab your attention increases these are small tips i can give you of course i don't i don't say that invest in a laptop immediately but tomorrow these are investments for a child's learning but headphones are compulsory the moment you give good headphones they can hear well they interact well number 3 number 3 you space your classes well and that is a something you have to work with your schools so example i can't have a math science and say a social studies class at the same time i need a little break so i will have a life skill class an arts class and the child needs to look forward to the classes the timing of the classes makes a lot of difference Uh, brother i i i i'm sure online is not a you know the brother said that i don't feel online you know accept it the sooner you accept it the better it becomes sometime we are not willing to accept it we are waiting for the real school to start trust me the new model has taught this is also the real school so i hope i've given you some tips with online yes brother sadak i hope you have little more feelings to it uh, inshallah 
I also encourage teachers to interact. Andhala, I did a lovely uh, program teaching teachers on multiple intelligences. Yes, we need to do a lot more with the teachers. You, teachers need to do uh, tools like you know whiteboard, FI, Mentimeter, Kahoot quizzes, quizzes, small interactions. Teachers need to show videos, make PowerPoint presentation. Uh, this is for the teacher's side. But if you are a teacher and educator, convey that to your teachers that they need to do that. So I hope I have answered that first part. I've not solved everything, but I, I, I hope I have given you ideas. Uh, Abdullah, I'll come to the reading part because there's some more questions. Who are uh, and yes, please join the WhatsApp group that the team has. If you aren't a part of it, this is a wonderful team. That I see brothers here. Uh, can I take some questions from from there? Okay, very quickly I'll go. I don't know what the time is. What are the uh, brother uh, Abdullah has asked a question, a relevant one. What are the essential skills for children nowadays? Trust me, yes, I know some schools are not. Some schools are also brother Abdullah. Life skill, 21st century life skill is the key. Words like critical thinking, creative thinking, empathy, grit. Subhanallah, no matter what happens, your life skills will not change. Online, offline, real world, growing up, children, we must teach life skills to our children. You are failing or you are doing injustice if you are not. See, today, today, accepting it is a life skill. No, there are two kind of people in the in the new normal. One who are sulking. Business is not good, problem is school is not good, Wi-Fi is not good, and we always complain. And the language you use yourself, imagine if I come to you and say, brother, my life is not good, what will you tell me? Go oh, jump from the building? You won't tell that to me. But when you talk to yourself, you talk a negative language. Imagine, we talk to ourselves so much, so much, so much, so much, so much, so much, we speak such a negative language with each other. So that is a mental space. We are not teaching mental health. We are not teaching anger issues. We are not teaching uh, uh, issues like depression and life skills. So these are two skills you must have in your classes. Create programs once a week and you can have somebody guest coming and teaching that. If the school is not doing it, you have great family and community to do that. Uh, Abdul Majid Bhai, please go ahead. I think I see your raised hand. You are a senior uh, elders. Please unmute and speak up, sir. Uh, sir, you're muted. Please unmute and speak. Gulam, your voice is not... Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Again, uh, you need to... Uh, okay, uh, as the brother comes in, inshallah, we'll wait for you. But uh, with regards to the classes, yes, inshallah, I'll let you know more about the life skill classes. I've done some few courses on life skill. And can, can you hear me? Yes, yes, go ahead, go ahead, please. Yes, uh, I said, Jazakallah khair, uh, brother Dawood, for, the, for your uh, insight and the presentation on the academic aspect of uh, children's studies, uh, children's education. Uh, uh, I, I just have one concern and one comment that uh, there is nothing uh, you have talked about or you have said anything about the religious aspect of uh, the children's development, like uh, teaching of the Quran and uh, their memorization of the Quran. I think it should be the basis for the children, yani being uh, Muslims. Okay. And uh, we haven't, seen, you haven't said anything or we haven't talked about this, that. So this should, this. Should, as a comment and my uh, uh, remark that this should be the core part wherein we should and then then build on the academic uh, development. So uh, I, I agree. Uh, I take this as a uh, equally as in what you are focusing. Right. Jazakallah, brother Kulam, absolutely. Perhaps the, the, the focus of the session was on online learning and the academics part. Maybe Alhamdulillah, I can I can do an entire session on what Quran means to us. I think I think faith is imbibed in everything we learn. You know, as we talk about it, you know, we spoke about the lessons that Allah has given to Iqra. The idea is today the world is changing and you can learn so much of faith-based education, the seerah that you're talking about, the ahadith that you're talking about, subhanAllah, absolutely. You integrate them as a part of your learning. Uh, online Quran, mashallah, uh, you know, I think uh, my daughter became a hafiz in the pandemic, alhamdulillah, this Ramadan. So, so I realized that she's become better with a teacher because of the online classes than with the physical class. So, so by Allah's grace, you, yes, 
utilize the talent you have got uh, scholars and people who can give webinars make sure they be part of it but the key here key here is integrate that as a lesson that you have i see when i say life skill subhanallah i see sira is a complete life skill in itself teach them the sira teach them the bio biographies you know as a gift give them the biographies of khalid and umar yes included as a part of it though the so the focus of the webinar was not such but to me yes our hearts are so much for it so so i take your feedback very very sportingly and yes i agree with it it should be part of what we do it's a narrative absolutely abdul majid sir please go ahead please go ahead i think i can see you raising your hand but your voice is muted sir i'm muted now yes please okay sir assalamu alaikum warahmatullah thank you very much for your informative information and you are insisting and you are telling us the importance of edu online education my question is little bit different that is that my younger daughter she is studying on online you know in online they have about 15 to 17 candidate or student there you know for teacher is very difficult if you tell the teacher one subject this is this is this is on out of 14 or 17 student suppose one or two three children they are unable to understand the topic so internet is a very difficult to trace out what are their problem you know at least in class teacher can go one each each of student to ask them what is their problem tell me what are the solution for that okay uh, i'll take your question abdul majid sir and also the the comment that sister afisha said very correctly that the students don't open up in front of the family members while participating online from home but they're very friendly a teacher has to be equipped with the technology you know today our our online tools are you know i keep saying that online learning is not the same as offline i can't open a book and teach the way i teach in an online learning uh, please make use of systems like breakout rooms so a very simple concept in zoom most of us now if if we are aware of it if we use it we are familiar breakout room makes you like if you have alhamdulillah a sizable number of people here we can divide it to breakout rooms say 50 people can be 25 each and it could be in four breakout rooms of 15 each or 12 each and suddenly your interaction is more more precise more focused and then you bring everybody back i i i am a strong proponent of using these tools as we go ahead when i ask you your feedback i can always use a mentimeter that you write down every student may not open up the way you and i open up see like example now mashallah some of you are very conveniently uh, you know opening your camera and speaking to me some of you are very uh, shy your cameras are always off you are more happy chatting it so alhamdulillah as a teacher if i am i'm considering my teacher here i'm using different resources i'm reading the chat i'm listening to you I, i'm working on my powerpoint presentation a good teacher has to equip themselves which is what we do trust me today's children are not shy with technology they are just not accepting it because we are not willing to let them experiment today still you know uh, i think i think one thing if you have learned from i have learned from netflix is still are becoming better readers because they are reading the subtitles you see they they otherwise would not read but if they are watching a series of their own and they can't understand they are reading subtitles so fast the english is improving subhanallah the world is changing the learning methods have changed you read more on whatsapp than you read in books strange isn't it but we do that So yes, I will. I will share some books. Absolutely, if you if you want to, that's something of a of a personal favorite. I can actually give an email the list to Brother Shamsir, and he can email to everyone in the group. So on the book note, there was a question Abdullah by asked on on reading. All I'm requesting, and I said, have you created mini libraries in your home? You know, like we buy by shoes or buy handbags or clothes. Sometimes we don't even use them. Invest in books. Nasim Talib, the author of the book called Black Swan, says anti library. he said we end up buying books we never read but they'll still benefit you so my recommendation is buy a lot of books these are some beautiful color books a uh, child's first encyclopedia or books on a subject that a child is interested in my daughter is a big time uh, a science fan so i have picked up a lot of science books and it's all lying in the house i know she'll pick up uh, even a book like geronimo stilton not some people are not very uh if you're not familiar with it's a book of a mouse right geronimo but it's a very good book with language i don't recommend wimpy kids so much but if a child reads it at least they're picking up the books as brother gulam rightly said make sure you also have some beautiful books in sira you know if you can start with there is a book uh, uh, icon network ico has an entire sira book 
Uh, Yusuf Islam has written a book called, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, on Sira itself, Ahmed Ben Dafa has a book called A Day with the Prophet. These are books you should read about. You know, some of the some of the elders, I recommend a book called Enjoy Your Life by Sheikh Muhammad Al-Arifi. Trust me, one of my beautiful, most favorite book you've got. You can pick up a book. Uh, Good Words has a lot of colorful books on, on the prophet stories. The more you read, the more you buy them, your children will pick it up. So there we are. Uh, I over to the admins and Shamshir Bhai. If I missed out any question, you can read out. Hopefully. Yeah, actually, uh, to be frank with you, we have to close in a few minutes. I know many people are excited and things like that. So just uh, in the interest of time, so we can have a hard stop after five minutes, let's say. So if you have any questions within five minutes. Brother Gulam has uh, one more question, I said. He is against yeah. his Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jazakallah uh, khair. Just uh, one concern and one question. Uh, we are talking about uh, coding and uh, new technologies for children. So what, what would be the age that we should be, uh, what would, shouldn't there be an age related to everything? I mean, how would it be feasible for a seven-year-old or an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old to push him or push him in or, or, or introduce him to coding and uh, um, artificial intelligence or such new technologies, you know, that, 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 that keeps you so, that, that absorbs you so much uh, in them. And I think children, being children as they are, and when the, when the parents, uh, they tell them, uh, do this, I mean, the, the small children, they, they wouldn't say, no, I don't want to do this, I don't like this, but they would be in a pressure state and in introducing, to, uh, introducing them to such technologies, I think uh, they should be. Uh, we should consider the age group of children to what we introduce them to. Well, your comments and uh, remarks, uh, brother Daud. Okay. No, no, no. Jazakallah again. I, I, I like the insightful uh, comments. I think, I think if you ask White Hat Junior, the company that just got acquired by Baiju, uh, uh, when to start coding, they will say before in, in the pregnancy itself. Subhanallah. You know, I am really amazed at the way they're marketing things, and I'm not absolutely a fan of this coding. But no, 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 I never use uh, coding as an uh, early stage. I think sometimes we hear what we want to hear. I always insist on reading books. Uh, perhaps, yes, there's a time and place for everything. There's a time for coding also. I'm not saying that you should not, but it's not now. It's not at the time where I keep insisting it's the life skill that you introduce. Public speaking, creative thinking, make your children thinkers, make your children empathetic, interpersonal relationship. There are time, 10 life skills, United Nations says, and I, I focus a lot on that that uh, you know interpersonal learner is nothing but how do you interact with people sometimes children cannot make an eye contact you know subhanallah if you have to meet a physical person you always shake hand this is a beam it has taught you interpersonal skills subhanallah these are what we need to learn the etiquettes i always say ilm without akhlaq is no ilm at all right a world-class education without world-class manners will give you world-class criminals that's it you and you know a lot of people in india and across i've seen people uh, subhanallah so ill is all but akhlaq. What's the akhlaq? The teacher tells them, and I've seen seven year olds and six years old know how to mute and unmute themselves. That's an akhlaq. They raise their hand. You know, there's an emoticon reaction. I, if I want, I, I will put a hands up like this. And they raise their hand. This is, this is knowledge. This is online knowledge, but this is knowledge. Of course, there is a time for ICT. Computers are very important. So is artificial importance, uh, intelligence and robotic. But more importantly is that algorithms and analytical learning. You can always learn AI and coding at grade 8, 9, 10, or perhaps at a higher college. There's something called higher learning also. Don't push your children. As well. I, I think I agree with you, Brother Bulam. Don't push your children. There's a program called Scratch. Go online, do a Coursera course. You'll know Scratch. It's a free program. If you're so excited, go and teach your children yourself. You can do that. So inshallah on that, uh, by the way, Coursera is a, uh, Udemy and Coursera are two very good sources for US teachers. There are 500 to 600 Indian rupee courses. Learn these courses and teach them. There are resources available. We only want to spend money because if it's big money, we think it's good learning. You can learn free and, and economical in today's time. That is what democratic uh, internet has done. The, the, uh, the world has become more easier and that is what we can make. So Jazakallah for your comment and for clarifying that no, it's not coding, it's akhlaq and life skills and reading. And that's what we're talking about. Once again, Barakallah, everybody for, for being part of such a 
lovely audience today and, and over to you jazakallah khair sir we will take one more question last question uh, brother daud inshallah after that we'll close it inshallah uh, brother i can't receive the email jazakallah assalamu alaikum uh, brother daud sir wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah that is what uh, we you know in a way discourage uh, children to use mobile phones we uh, do not many of the parents do not encourage uh, children to use mobile phones to give mobile phones they have a kind of feeling that mobile phones are not uh, good for students uh, as a result we know very well there are so many disadvantages of the smartphones as a result the children do discourage what uh, do you opine in this regard uh, sir i'm smiling because you know uh, sugata mitra very famous educationist says something that when we were growing up our parents told us don't watch tv it will spoil your eyes correct you know and then then we said the same thing it says before that 50 years back people used to say don't read books it will spoil your eyes you see, exactly the world changes so much that what i'm saying is i keep telling parents especially don't tell your this to your children mobile phones don't spoil your eyes trust me you know they have got this beautiful screen the 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 the, the uv protected screen alhamdulillah it is completely harmless and safe i say what it spoils is what is here you know all the fortnites and pubgs and the games they play it's called limited use you no know, that's what we are talking about and that is the kind of responsibility you know it's called freedom with fences you will have to give certain tools to your children these tools will be difficult but if they can manage they cannot manage life itself there is a technique called pomodoro technique in your mobile phone put an alarm when i tell my child okay take this mobile phone and you can watch what you want to right i will put an alarm in the mobile phone and when the alarm rings they know it's time up that's called pomodoro technique use your mobile phone as a tool not as a toy same way you can tell them if you overshoot a time that i have allowed you to watch tomorrow you will be penalized it's a barter system you work with your children so uh, mohammed bhai this is the kind of work we need uh, you can't deny them the technology that they are so used to now but you can always give them the boundaries around technology hope that helps yes, yes otherwise they will uh, they will get into other ways uh, you know by uh, denying us and uh, yes, by cheating yes. us in order to get into the ways oh, oh they are smarter than us yes they know technology exactly. technology exactly. They, uh, exactly you know they know instagram and facebook and one request to all the parents don't send friend request to your teenage daughters and son on facebook they'll block you yes jazakallah barakallah <laughs> right uh, now shaja bhai and shishir bhai we're done so jazakallah khair for your wonderful session mashallah it was indeed very very knowledgeable for us and you know we all also uh, apart from being a knowledgeable person mashallah you are very humble and the way you have taught us like you know like students so it was very very interesting for us so having said this uh, i have to have a hard stop because tomorrow is a working day for many of the people here so thank you very much as much as we want to continue but i have to say a hard stop here so thank you jazakallah khair for all your time and efforts and you know especially in these uh, difficult times your you know your schedule is very tight and you have agreed to give your inputs to us so we really appreciate all your efforts and th- thanks again jazakallah khair wa khudana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin